What's up guys? So today I thought it would be kind of fun if we did a Caribbean cocktail. Now, how does a Caribbean cocktail differ from a tiki cocktail, you ask? Well, the Caribbean cocktails are a set of cocktails made in the Caribbean before tiki ever existed. And these were the drinks uh, that were inspired uh, the likes of Trader Vic and Don the Beachcomber. These guys would travel the Caribbean, have these wonderful drinks, and then they decided they wanted to try and bring a slice of paradise home and they created the kind of the tiki bar, right? Um, so the drink that we're making tonight is called the La Florida, which is the uh, namesake bar of the La Florida uh, bar in Cuba, uh, Havana, Cuba. And the uh, bartenders, the head bartender there is named Constante Rebelaigua, right? Reb I, th I think it's Rebelagua. Rebelagua? With some oh, maybe. silent things in there. Oh, you think so? Rebel so it's either Rebella Igua or Rebelagua, which I actually think yours is a little more plausible. It, it's, it rolls off the tongue a little bit more. Rebelagua, yeah. Rebelagua. Like you, just, I feel like I've you heard say that it name fast before. like you know what you're talking about. Yeah, and I've heard that name before, I think, or Rebelagua. So anyway, this is a fantastic drink. It doesn't have a lot of rarefied ingredients. Yes, I'm using Cuban rum, but that's because I have Cuban rum. But you can use any light rum you want. Um, and it's a pretty, I th like most of the stuff, most, most of the stuff that's in this people are going to have in their home bar. Uh, so let's get into making the drink. Um, and I was going to redo this whole thing, but because I like, there was like a little weirdness right in the middle, but I, you know, I'm not going to do it. I think we're just going to go straight through and we're going to start with our, um, we're going to start with our uh, uh, least expensive ingredient first. So first thing we're going to do is one ounce of lime juice. Then we're going to do one teaspoon of uh, grenadine. We're going to do one teaspoon of dry curacao. We're going to do quarter of an ounce of white creme de cocoa. Half an ounce of sweet vermouth. And then one ounce of Havana Club. And I just want to say, Eric, if you're watching, I just gave you a bottle of Havana Club. You can definitely make this cocktail. And I'm pretty sure you have most of this stuff in your bar. Just FYI. All right, so we're just going to grab our ice, put it in our tin, add it to our pitcher, shake it up. All right, center our glass. Ooh, it's going to be nice, nicely aerated, my friend. And then it calls for an orange twist. But you know what I think I'm going to do with this orange twist? I'm going to take it, I'm going to spritz it. And then I think we should cut it up, Marius. Just make it look nice. Just make it look nice. I'm going to give a nice garnish. Kind of do that. Like even if I just laid it on top like that, would that be nice? Because we lay it on top so much and it's just a little bit, or should I do the whole twisty thing? Like twisty thing like that or should I just lay it on top? Mary's is like, just lay it on top. Every time you try and do the twisty thing, you, you screw it up, dude. And you still haven't, still haven't done that fancy twisty garnish that I wanted you to do. Yeah, no. You have all right, I'll, 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 I'll learn the fancy twisty garnishes for next week, okay? All right, let's give it a taste. Ooh, that is good. And you know, what's really great about it is that, you know, you would think that the lime juice, the one ounce of lime juice would be a little too much lime and too tart because you've got grenadine going in there, you've got your a dry curacao going in there, but and you have the creme de coco. All of these things have a fair amount of sugar in them, but they're not like what I would say like are very, very sweet, but they balance out the lime. But what's really great about it 
is that you get, you know, you get your rum, right? You has, it has that like kind of rum flavor and then you get the savoriness. You get that like kind of savory herbalness from the sweet vermouth. Um, but it is really sharp and very citrusy uh, drink. It is really, really nice. Um, you get a lot of like, I mean, it's really sharp and citrusy. You get a lot of like complexity in there though. And the, the creme de coco is like just a hint. It's just like right on the surface of it. It's like really citrusy. You get a little of that grenadine. You get a, a little of that sweet vermouth. It's playing really nicely with the rum. And then you get this little layer of creme de coco. Uh, it's not chocolatey, but it's just like this little hint of chocolateness that's just so, so good. Um, so I think you guys should rush out and make this. If it is hot where you live, this is a really nice kind of hot weather drink. It's pretty hot here in LA right now, so uh, I'm digging this. Uh, but it's just a fantastic drink anyways, and it utilizes most ingredients that you're gonna probably have. I think the one thing that some people might get a little bit of trouble with is the white creme de coco, but otherwise, what? you're gonna have this stuff. Oh, it's like pretty it's, common. Yeah, because this it. is probably the most uncommon ingredient is white creme de coco. Most people who have creme de coco or creme de cacao, it's usually the dark variety, not the light one. But if you do get it, it's probably going to last you for years. It'll last you for an eternity. See, but that's the thing that I say is that a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to get this because I'll never use it. And it's like, dude, get it because it's going to last you an eternity. And the next time it pops up in a cocktail and it will pop up in a cocktail on this channel, you will then have it in your repertoire. So you don't have to worry about going out and getting it. So you might as well just keep the bottle for a while. Why not? And uh, how long does it last? Just indefinitely? It's indefinite, yeah. It's, uh, it, this and it can stay outside? Forever. No refrigeration? No yeah. refrigeration. The only time you have to worry about refrigeration, guys, is, guys, is from wine-based spirits. A lot of people have been asking me about this. I am going to do an entire thing on vermouth. So you guys, I'm going to do... Like right now, Marius and I are playing with a whole bunch of different types of videos. And one of them is going to be a deep dive on vermouth and exactly what it is so that you guys know all about wine. Like basically wine, like it's a wine and fortified with spirits is basically what it is. And then macerated with herbs. And so when it has a wine base, you need to refrigerate it because it will go bad. So it's like a spiked wine? Yeah, they basically fortify it usually with like brandy, like some kind of grape spirit usually, or they'll do neutral grain spirits. And then they, and they, so they fortify it with that so it lasts a little longer. And then they macerate a bunch of, uh, you know, herbs and spices and barks and whatever uh, into it. So, you know, wormwood, that kind of thing. So it does last a little longer. Even in the fridge though, it will eventually, it'll, it'll turn and it will go off. But it'll last a few months in the fridge. All right, guys, I'll see you guys on another time. If you like our channels, please hit like and subscribe. Check us out on Patreon. Check us out, our, check out our YouTube subscriptions. Uh, check out Barfly Free Pair and go sub us over there. We got some good stuff there.